Hello guys, I'm Futureal. I stream five days a week over on twitch.tv slash Futureal and in this video it's yet another map from the Crafter League in Project Diablo 2. The Summon Zone uh, has a project this this little uh, mid-season event and that is to complete all the maps on her own with the complete passive and magic build, the Summon Zone. This is the sixth map and we are going to do the Fledgestone map. Um, traditionally a map that has been quite large, but it was changed a couple of seasons ago. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this is going to go. If you do enjoy these videos, please hit me up with a like and a subscribe. And also leave your comment down below for what you want to see in the next PD2 videos. Until then, take care and I will see you soon. Alright guys, yet again we have another map. It is the Fledgestone map, which was uh, included already in Season 1. Uh, it was a very big and clunky and kind of tough map, but uh, it's been changed over the seasons and I think this is going to be real nice. Now, we have acquired some gear changes since the previous map. Uh, nothing for the mercenary though, this is exactly the same uh, that we have had before. Just quickly go over them so you can see. Uh, nothing really spectacular here. Th the weapon is nice, it's cruel with... Um, uh, with five sockets. It's it's nice. Uh, we need an Umrun so we can upgrade it, but uh, hopefully we can find that today. Um, our inventory is, uh, you know, we're playing a lower res wand on swap in case we need that. Uh, we have the same, uh, we have the same gear that we had before. Let's go quickly go over that as well. Um, but we have had some changes to our uh, inventory. So uh, I'm going to show you guys that now. So the small charms are exactly the same, just lifers across the board, one with lightning res. Um, Anilus is the same, but we have a new torch. So we managed to, yesterday to acquire a 20 res torch, which was uh, very, very nice. We also uh, got a, um, uh, here, 60 strength passive. That's basically the same as 18 life. We have a 34 lifer right here. We got another 5 strength right here, and a 24 lifer. So we got 4 changes on the skillers since yesterday, and we got a 20 rest torch. So our resistances are looking a bit better. Um, we have some protection against conviction. Maybe not the, in the lightning uh, department so much, but the rest is, uh, is pretty, uh, pretty good. So we're going to do the same thing as we always do, guys. Uh, we do have the map, and we are going to corrupt said map, and we're going to do the map no matter what outcome we have. So, uh, fingers crossed, and let's see what happens. It actually stayed at uh, the point it was. We did gain some cast speed. That's very interesting. We might actually be at the 99 breakpoint. But okay, let's head off to the map. All right, there we have it, guys. The 213 Fledgestone map. Let's do it. Yeah, doing pretty good. Can't lie. Are doing uh, doing pretty good. These Moon Lords are kind of nasty. Uh, not gonna lie. Uh, we do have to pick some of these um, uh, some of these items up for uh, gold acquisition because we have to buy uh, reroll tokens and stuff like that. I don't really like these guys resurrecting behind me. That's kind of annoying. And the, um, what I'm seeing right now is like the map uh, is very open at certain places, meaning that my units will kind of like thin out somewhat. 
uh, I won't be able to have as good DPS as I would in other areas. <laughs> hey, e Epsilon with the four months, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Welcome back. We're gonna be playing this uh, long, meaning that we are gonna have a good range to uh, all the units. Play it like a real summon build. Like it, it would be um, a bit easier if we had something to do while we were standing on range. Uh, but because we have uh, made this uh, commitment to have a full passive zone, it, it is exactly that. It's a, it's a little bit passive. <laughs> no pun intended. So this is going uh, all right uh, thus far. Th this map has become um, a lot better after they ch made the changes to... Uh, um, the, the the map design. The map was really, really large for a long time. And then they, they kind of made the map a bit smaller. The progression through the map has been made a bit more linear. Um, still burning my eyes from the lava, though. It's a, it's very, very bright. It's a, I have to, like, almost squint at the the monitor to, uh, to not have to blink or start tearing up. It's a very, very bright uh, map. Hey, thanks so much, Epsilon. I appreciate it. Ral room. Okay, let's grab the Ral. I do like this map, though. I did play this map quite a bit, actually, in, in Season 1 with the Summon Druid. Um, but I, I wish that it, it wasn't screaming at me so much. Yeah, I probably could uh, could reduce the settings, but I mean the problem in that case would be that I would have to increase it when I go to other areas again. So uh, if I have to change the settings just for one map and I have to change it back later, that's a little uh, eh. It's it's not ideal. Um. Okay. Watch out to not get a sunburn. This is correct. I can't carry anymore. Okay. Over there. All right, let's move on. Oh, there's a River of Flame in uh, the Belzebub uh, mod for D1. I haven't played that, actually. Is that um, the fan-made um, uh, expansion? Or is, was that Hellfire? I can't, I can't remember. There's also Arcane Sanctuary, really. Cool. Oh, the, it's cut content. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's plenty of that uh, in, in D2 as well. There was a lot of content in D2 that was... Uh, that was in the game, but already... Uh, like, it was already designed and in the game, but it was disabled. It didn't make the final cut. Constricting Ring is, is one of them. Um, initially, the Plague Rune Word. And there's also other Rune Words that uh, are in the game, 
So you, if you have a specific versions of the game, you can actually enable those rune words by editing the, the game files. Because the rune words are already there, they're just disabled. I think Blizzard is going to try to take down PD2. Why would they take down PD2? They don't have any... They don't have any... Uh, basis to do that. PD2 is not doing anything illegal. It's, it's very common, though. I mean, uh, in, for instance, um, look at how every single level 2 looks like in a dungeon. So the pit's level 2. How... How many dungeons in the game look like pit's level 2? Grand Charm, okay. No, but I mean, I still don't really understand the question, because uh, Project Diablo 2, uh, they're not in, in breach of uh, terms of service, so... Blizzard can't really do anything about that, unless they want to suddenly forbid all types of... Uh, of virtual battle net mods for the old game. Uh, which, you know, it would be an incredible douche move because there's so many mods that use the virtual battle net. PD2, POD, Median XL, Slash. There, there's no reason why that would ever happen. I'm unsure in what uh, direction. Oh, I think this is the... This is the correct way. No, wait. That's the opposite of what I meant to say. This is not the correct way. So we should go here first. To make sure that we have explored everything. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Dora was initially a mod from uh, Warcraft 3, right? The first Dora game? I can't carry anymore. There we go. FCR do we have here? 117! Yikes. Yeah, these guys can go over there. When, you, when you're amped, you've got to be really careful about these uh, chargers. They can do a lot of damage if they uh, successfully charge you. Oh, perfect ruby. Let's pick that I one can't up. Carry anymore. Hey, morning, Bolin. Oh, 
Oh, mercenary down. Feels bad, man. I think he was amped as well. That's why he got shred. Yeah, they're, they're all of them. All of them are getting amped right now. All right, there we go. It's a little nasty one over there. Real nasty. Let's uh, actually jump up and uh, empty the inventory while we are at it. Evening. Hello. Salutations. Some 35k across the board here. That is very nice. Ooh, 10 FCR, but ooh, no resistances. Feels bad. Um, yeah, we're gonna toss this into the uh, inventory. These uh, treasure goblins are uh, insane right now. What happened to the tier? Yeah, there we go. Um, was there a dot? No, there's the Rao. And the Tal. And the shale. Okay, so we almost got all varieties of runes. Uh, and the blue one there. Cool. Alright. Yeah, absolutely. That is uh, that is a very good point. It's something that a lot of people actually overlook because it helps keep uh, it, it helps keeping the game alive, right? Because you're not forced to play the same mode all the time. You can play different things, so you like you know even if you love the game, you will get tired of it at one point. So when you have different game modes uh, to play, it helps keep the game fresh. No, but it's not about will care, uh, Runfish. It's in Blizzard's terms of service that you can mod Diablo 2. The only thing you need to do is that you have to require the people that connect to the mod uh, to have a valid Diablo 2 key. Because then, obviously, Blizzard gets their money. Uh, you're not allowed to do like what they, for instance, did in, uh, in World of Warcraft. Uh, with having um, private servers that were free to play. That's not allowed. You have to make sure that people uh, have a uh, legitimate Diablo 2 and Lord of Destruction key if they want to play these mods. And that's the big difference. So there's a lot of materials. Hey, enjoy. How's it going? Can I not pick these up? Yeah, goblin trap. Exactly. Everything... Uh, it's filling my inventory. I actually can't pick up that diamond. It's out of bounds. It's a little annoying, but you know. It is what it is, right? Um, pick some mana potions here. But this is going... Uh, this is going really well. Uh, the way that this map has been remade into a more... Uh, linear progression. It does make this map a lot more pleasant to play because you're not double backing and you you not have you don't have to worry so much about uh, 
uh, running down the map in the correct in the correct way. This is more. Um, this is more just like start the map and go, and you will be fine. Now we have not completed the Grail yet. Uh, we are doing. Uh, we are doing PD2 to. I mean, PD2 was supposed to be tomorrow, but we have to. Uh, we have to go away tomorrow. We were gonna go to see an office today, but the office is closed. Um, or it closes at 12:30, so we weren't gonna make it. So we have to go tomorrow morning instead. That's why I'm streaming today. Um, but the Apple 2 Resurrected will be back on Thursday. And uh, we're gonna start preparing for uh, ladder reset. With uh, gonna make some uh, uh, some bu budget Uber guides, and uh, we're also gonna um, uh, we're gonna level up the uh, Holy Grail Druid. Hopefully, at least we're gonna hit 98. Uh, before the ladder hits, so we can uh, go straight into magic finding when we are taking a break from the ladder in about, you know, a month or so. I'm gonna be doing Sorceress, actually. Uh, I haven't been playing Sorceress for like three years. I've been doing uh, Barb and Druid, you know, because I did a Barb-only Grail, and then after that I did a, uh, a Druid-only Grail, and in PD2 I haven't played Sorceress, so... I'm actually looking forward to play Sorceress for uh, for a change. So I'm gonna do um, uh, Blizzard Sorceress first, and then uh, swap for... Uh, I think I'm gonna go Nova. Either Nova or uh, or Lightning. I haven't decided. One of them, anyway. Well, combustion doesn't exist, though. We're talking about uh, uh, resurrected here. The first uh, resurrected ladder season. Yeah, yeah, no worries. We're talking about all the different games, so it's uh, it's fine. You're gonna go Summon Necro. Summon Necro is uh, a really, really solid build. I think I think the only the only problem with the Summon Necro is uh, how slow it is at first, because you don't have uh, any way to reposition your army. But what's your uh, what's your plan for the uh, the farming stage? You're gonna do cows, or maybe uh, Travancore? Are you gonna do cows? Yeah. Cows is solid though. Because as soon as you have one target, you can just blow up the entire map. I, I actually don't see the. Um the fascination behind Hydra Sorcerers. It's just a bad trap synth. It's, it's basically like comparing this summon zone to a summon necro or a summon druid. It's, it's basically exactly the same gameplay as a trap synth. Yeah, but it, it's not about the damage. The damage in the trap synth is great as well. Like, the damage is amazing. It's the playstyle that's the problem. Like, you have to... Oh, you go somewhere? Okay, so I place this thing on the ground, then place this thing on the ground, then this thing on the ground. Okay, the first thing starts shooting. Oh, crap, the target moved out of the way. I'm shooting the wall. Okay, this thing on the ground... Like, it's so freaking clunky. It's really good in the opening stages. If you want to farm uh, Mephisto, for instance. Because you can... You can um, uh, Moat trick him very easily. But you also pretty much confine yourself only to farm that area. I feel like the Blizzard Sorceress is just vastly superior to the Fire Sorceress in the early game. And I think Blizzard... No, I mean... Uh, I think um, Hydra Sorceress is gonna be uh, a mean build. 
when it comes to uh, efficiency. Like, by all means, if you enjoy playing it, then you play it. That's why I'm playing Summon's Arm as well. Because I, I enjoy playing the build. Um, but I just feel like you're... Uh, you're just playing a worse traps in at the end of the day. Come on, game. Give me my um rune. And when you get to three, it's going to be 99% with fist runs. Yeah, I think I think the height resources will be good at that. Absolutely. Because you can stand so far away, right? Very, very safe. Trapsin doesn't have good FCR breakpoint. Oh, yes, it does. 102 FCR uh, Trapsin is amazing. And it's very easy to get 102 as well. You basically just go... Uh, uh, Heart of the Oak, Rock and Smash, and Spirit. And then you need seven more FCR from your amulet. So you get a two, two to skills, seven FCR crafted amulet, and your uh, your Gucci. And uh, if you do that build, you don't need to invest more than one point in a burst of speed as well to have the fastest uh, attack speed breakpoint for your traps. It's a really nice build, actually. I made a guide on the um, on the lightning traps in. Uh, well, actually, you can use that build on, with fire as well, to be fair. But if you want to check out the traps in build, you can just uh, um, you can just type in. Exclamation point B O T B. Best of the best. Yeah, but 63 on a sorceress also is uh, is, is clowny, right? You, you need to get 105. So like double spirit, <coughs> like double spirit and stealth. That's basically your uh, your base, right? And then you swap it out with the, uh, with like Viper Magi and whatever you can find at that point. It's not very hard to get 105 on a Sorceress either. Oh, another, another Rune Diarrhea over here. Oh, that's an I.O. room. There we go. I am overburdened. Um, that's a lot of stuff. Don't even have a uh, room for this. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's understandable. I don't, I don't mind that at all. What I'm just saying is that, um, from a pure efficiency point of view, uh, the hydra sorcerer, uh, the yeah, the hydra sorceress is not going to be amazing. It's almost like comparing um, a frenzy barb to a to a whirlwind barb, right? It's still gonna be all right, but you know you you, you do realize uh, immediately that you are lacking because you have chosen to go uh, frenzy instead of whirlwind when it comes to uh, to farming large packs. The sorceress is mo is like it's obviously easier because you have teleport. You don't really have teleport uh, for a long time on the traps in unless you want to do like uh, dragon flight, but that's super scary.
I think we are actually uh, getting towards the end of this map. We'll go across the bridge here. Yeah, and like, and that and that's another thing though. The, the, I think the most important thing with the entire decision that you made is that you know what it means. Like, you understand that it means that, okay, you are confined to Mephisto until basically you get Infinity. So whatever whatever you can get from, in, from Mephisto, trade it for runes, use the runes to get Infinity, and then you can do whatever afterwards, right? I think particularly if you are not aware of what it means and you just want to play the build because it's cool, then you're going to be in trouble because when you when you realize that the only thing you can do efficiently is farming Mephisto for days and days and days, um, for someone who is who is casual, that could be uh, a bit of a a bit of a blow, right? Because they want to play the entire game. They don't want to, you know, do 6,000 Mephisto runs. But as long as you're aware that this is what you're going for, this is what you're going to have to do, and that's what you enjoy, well, by all means. The build is going to be just fine for that. Uh, Trav has all uh, immunities. Although there's only one unit that is... Uh, that is always cold immune. And you can get around him by either um, having a little bit of strength on your mercenary, or you can even just skip him when you have killed the other stuff. Hey, Fotsaliska. Morning. How are you today? Yeah, but, I mean, poison. Durr. Who plays poison? That being said, the poison, uh, the poison javelin uh, is actually not bad in trap. It might be for exactly that reason. Yeah, we t we tested the poison javelin. Uh, remember, in the uh, the beta the beta video that I made. It feels so weird to not have um, anything to buff with. Like, my hand wants to weapon switch and buff up with... Uh, <laughs> with... Uh, Call to arms from time to time here. But I keep not being able to. This build is um, is exactly that. It's pretty cool. It, it's not a, a very very strong build at all, but it's it's a lot of fun. It is it's like a completely like I I don't do damage whatsoever. Like I'm completely passive. I don't even have a damage spell chosen. Um, I don't have a damage spell over here. So it's completely passive. Uh, I'm just uh, repositioning my uh, my units when they end up in Narnia. Yeah, it is. It is almost like a bodyguard uh, build, to, 
be honest. You are right. Uh, what do we have? Yeah, I think this uh, might be the last... Uh, the last platform. Before the final room here. Yeah, it's actually 99 here, uh, Fossilisco. There is plus 40% on the map, so I'm running around with uh, 117. And normally I run the 68 uh, breakpoint. Yeah, I do think this is going to lead us straight to the last uh, last platform. Oh yeah, it's a lot worse, uh, STS. A lot. 117 FCR in PD2. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's 20 FCR in Resurrected. Like, teleporting has been absolutely brutalized in PD2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the breakpoints are completely different, and they they have changed. Um, it's not just the the breakpoints; they have also changed the animation, right? The animation is much slower. So it's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. It's almost like teleporting with an Amazon, if you remember how that felt. So it's it's much much slower. But it is done on purpose, though. No, it, it's not. That's not all. That's not all. Because um, you have to uh, you have to look at the the frames, and the frames are not the same. But but you you are correct. There is a there is a break point for teleporting at 116 no 117 in PD2. That the break points are following the lightning break points, right? For teleport. Um, that's that's correct. But the amount of frames in between a teleport and another teleport is different than in the original game. Yeah, the, the animation is just, uh, yikes. But okay, we are um, at the last boss. So let's hope we don't get barbecued in here. Just gonna need to create some, uh, some distance, create some space. Jewel. Now I think um, I think you you still uh, you're you're still in trouble if you don't play Enigma, unfortunately. I mean, if you play on Battle.net, right? And you're doing bail bombs and stuff, and you have a, a sorceress teleport for you, by all means, play play Chance of Honor. But uh, not having Enigma, it's it is so punishing. It's so unbelievably punishing because you can't reposition your army all of a sudden. You can't reposition your mercenary, you can't reposition your 
your Valkyrie, like you can't jump over walls, over rivers. It just becomes so unbelievably in inefficient. You use Hodo on your Java fan. Oh, really? I would probably use... Uh, Oh, this actually worked better than expected. This guy is kind of scary. He has really high damage. But uh, we, we caught him on over here, so... Yeah, very, very happy with that. Okay, cool. That was the Fledgedon map, guys. Um, I think f this was the longest map this far. Uh, you know, 46 minutes, but we also spent some time. Um, not very difficult at all very linear progression you can have like a wall of units in front of you it's it's it kind of like fits uh, what the build wants to do it's like a shield walking forward killing everything in in front of you so uh yeah very happy with this um hope you enjoyed the map if you did don't forget to check out the next maps in the description